you're pre-qualified. Yay! But now what? Did you know the pre-qualification is just the first step of getting pre-approved? You're almost done, but there is one more important step left that needs your immediate attention. In order to be pre-approved, you need to supply your supporting documents, your most recent 30 days of pay stubs, your 2018 and 2019 W-2s, 60 days of your most recent pay stubs, a copy of your driver's license, a copy of your social security card. You need to get these loan documents to your loan officer as soon as possible. But before you hand in your documents in any old way you feel like, let's talk about each one and what exactly is needed so the underwriter will accept what you provide. First of all, the underwriter has to be able to read your documents. Be sure to send the best, most legible copy you possibly can. These loan documents are your lending resume. You wouldn't give a crumpled, faded, or cut off resume to a potential employer, would you? Of course not. So just remember that whatever you give your loan officer is the only thing an underwriter is going to know about you as a potential buyer, so make a good impression. In almost every case, a screenshot from your phone is unacceptable. The most recent 30 days of pay stubs. Be sure to send the most recent 30 days of pay stubs. The pay stubs need to show deductions and year-to-date figures, so send an actual pay stub, not a screenshot or picture of a check. There should be no gaps between pay stubs. If you can't find one, you'll need to get a copy from your employer. Tax returns do not trump W-2s. We need your W-2s, not your tax returns, unless specifically asked for. We need your W-2s for all jobs you've held in the last two years most recent two months of bank statements. This is the hands down the hardest set of documents to send correctly. So let's take a minute to explain what not to send. Do not send screenshots of your bank balance from your phone. Those are literally worthless. They're never acceptable. Sorry to be blunt, but people usually try this first. No. <laughs> Do not embed individual pages of your bank statements within the body of an email. This is painful and frustrating and does not produce the best quality. Do not leave any pages out. We need all pages, even if intentionally left blank. Do not mistake a transaction history for a bank statement. There's a big difference. We need the actual bank statement. Do not cut off any of the pages. The underwriter will not accept it if the edges are cut off. If you have to take a picture of the statements because you have no scanner and you can't print a PDF, then make sure you place each page on a flat, well-lit surface and get the entire page in the frame. The underwriter doesn't need to see your nail polish. Play it down and keep your finger down the picture, please. Do log on to your bank account and download the most recent two months of bank statements to PDF. If you can't find a way to download them, open the bank statement, hit print, then change the printer to PDF, and hit print again. It will prompt you to save it. After you save it, you can attach it to an email. If you have to go to the bank to get bank statements, make sure they stamp and initial every page. If you don't have a scanner, ask if they will fax them for you. A copy of your driver's license. They usually don't copy well, so just take a picture with your phone and attach it to an email. Do not embed it in the email. Check the expiration date. Many people find they have to renew their license because they didn't know it had expired. This one is pretty straightforward. The hardest thing with this one is finding where you put it. Once your loan officer has these docs in hand to match against the information provided in the pre-qualification, you will be pre-approved and can put an offer in on a house. You can go here to apply and also watch my videos on YouTube and please subscribe.